Okay, so a little something uh, out of the ordinary here, since this is, channel is normally uh, uh, dedicated to my radio control car hobby, but I do like to talk about other things from time to time, and I figure uh, today I'd like to talk about snowblowers. Uh, I live in the U.S. Northeast, and, you know, although we do get uh, a decent amount of snow, it's, you know, perhaps... Uh, somewhat minor league compared to what you know the real heavy snow folks get up in Canada or maybe in Vermont or something like that but occasionally we do get some pretty hefty snowstorms uh, so I want to talk about some snow blowers that I purchased recently and what I have been using for the past few years and just to add some context to this my driveway is about this wide okay so that's I don't know maybe 25 feet wide or so there's on either side and the outside. There's like a retaining wall and actually, you know, what? let me just show you If you can see outside, it's about that wide and the depth is maybe 30 feet or so so it's a decent sized driveway and uh, For the past I think four winters or so I've been using this guy right here. It's a Toro 1800 power curve This is a corded electric snowblower these are all electric, by the way, and I just purchased these two. So this one I've been using for about four years to do that whole driveway. And it's actually not bad. Uh, it's certainly the cheapest among these. I think this goes for around, I can't remember, maybe $250, $300, something, something like that. And despite the fact that it is the smallest among these, it's 18 inches wide, and the auger is a, is a plastic or rubber auger, it's not a metal auger, it still does okay. Like even when I've had really heavy snow, uh, you can still clear the driveway with this. It does take longer. You know, the, it's, it's a single stage unit, so you know, the, the nozzle or the, the chute will get clogged from time to time, especially if you're dealing with wet snow. And you'll be out there for quite some time, you know, clearing the chute and then, you know, trying to clear more snow with it and then it claws again, you gotta clear it again. So it does take time. I've had heavy snowstorms where I've spent maybe two hours clearing that driveway with this thing, but it will get the job done. Uh, the primary disadvantages of this, uh, other than the fact that it's not as powerful as these others, is that number one, it's corded. So what that means is you are limited in power output. This is, I believe, a 15 amp uh, 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 current sub, uh, 15 amp draw. Okay, so that will limit how big the motor is and how much snow you can throw. Uh, and what it also means is because it's corded, as you're moving up and down the driveway, you have to kind of carry the cord with you, make sure you're not running it over. So as you do one section over here or one section that way, as you pull the snowblower backwards, you got to pull the cord with you. And on its own, that's a minor inconvenience, but the, the, the practical issue there is that that cord is on the ground in the snow, and over time, your gloves will get wet as you're moving this cord around and you're handling it. And as, you know, if it's really cold outside and your gloves get wet, your hands are going to get cold and wet, so you have to have a couple of sets of gloves to work with as you're clearing the driveway with this thing. So that's, let's say, minor inconvenience number one. The second issue is a bit more uh, major, <clears throat> and it has to do with the type of motor design this has. This uses a DC brushed motor. Well, I don't know if it's DC, but it's definitely a brushed motor. <clears throat> so uh, what that means is you have uh, a commutator with two brushes uh, that supply current to the commutator and brush springs that push the brushes against the commutator. Now, in the past, I had stored this snowblower uh, over here in my storage compartment in the garage, and it was fine, uh, but what may have happened is, like over the summer, it might get a little bit humid in here, and there may have been a little bit of rust buildup on the inside. Um, it, either that or just from use over the winter, one or the other, I'm not 100% sure, but the brush springs uh, uh, one of them rusted out and so the spring actually broke and I was in the, literally in the middle of a blizzard the spring broke and I could not use this and so what I had to do was find a way to basically like unwind a coil of the spring and then remount it on the housing I wish I could show you a picture of this 
uh, but the, the, the way the spring mounts is really not that trivial. And um, that was good enough to provide enough tension to push the brush back onto the commutator and for me to get this thing running again. Uh, but it was a real pain. I must have spent like an hour doing that while snow was accumulating in the driveway. And then I finally got back out there. So that happened last winter and that's when I decided I need to retire this and get something else. Because the problem is, even though that brush spring might be a five cent part, you cannot buy replacement brush springs or brushes for this unit. For whatever reason, uh, you know, when you look at like um, the Toro parts list for this thing, that's not something you can get. And uh, to my recollection, you can't even buy a replacement motor. Maybe you can, uh, but that would be a very expensive replacement just to replace a tiny little part when everything else on it works just fine. So that's the disadvantage of owning this. It is the cheapest unit, but because it uses brush motors uh, over time, that could be a problem. Also, if you're really jostling it around, the brush spring can unseat and then the brush will come out and you'll try to turn it on and it won't turn on. And then you'll take it apart and you'll realize, oh, okay, the brush spring popped out. Then you just pop it back in. I've had that happen once or twice too. Uh, so brush springs are an issue with this. These two are brand new. Uh, this particular unit here, instead of an 18 inch unit, this is a 21 inch unit. Uh, that instead of being corded, it's battery powered. And this is a 26 inch unit that's a two stage. This is a single stage, this is a two stage, also battery powered. They use the exact same battery. Uh, in both models, I bought the 7.5 amp hour versions of these models. And the reason why these use batteries instead of cords is because they pull a lot more current. So a typical house circuit might be run on like a 20 amp fuse or a circuit breaker. And if these are pulling more than 20 amps, you know, you're going to trip the breaker. So at some point you have to put batteries in it to supply a high enough current to run a more powerful snowblower. That's why these run on batteries. <clears throat> so this one is, I can't remember the cost. It might be somewhere in the late $800 range, $700 range, thereabouts, uh, for the 7.5 amp hour model. I'm going to use this to replace this. This is a very light snowblower. It's easy to move around, okay? And this one is also pretty light. It's slightly heavier because it is bigger and it has a metal auger instead of a plastic auger, but it's still, you know, considerably lighter, especially compared to this thing. Um, so this I can use to like clear the walkway. I can also use it to clear the driveway for, let's say, you know, small to moderate snowstorms. Uh, I can just zip up and down this thing without having to worry about a freaking cord getting in my way and getting my hands wet. So then I only need one set of gloves. Um, I have seen reports or videos of people that have owned these where after a few seasons it stops working, they can't turn it on anymore. I'm not entirely sure why, but I figured I'd try it out and see how it works. The advantage of this compared to this, uh, other than it being a battery powered cordless snowblower is that it uses a brushless motor. So there's no brush springs, there's no brushes to wear out, none of that. It's completely brushless operation. So this should be essentially zero maintenance uh, forever, for as long as it'll run. This over here also uses a brushless motor. Okay, so these will last hopefully a lot longer than this thing. And this, by the way, got me through about four winters. Uh, I bought the two stage because sometimes we do get some pretty nasty snowstorms here, and especially toward the left end of the driveway where there's a retaining wall there, you get a snow drift that builds up there. And uh, this has a really hard time getting through that. It can get to it, but uh, 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 not all of it. So this is for the really big stuff. I also have a back driveway back that way that I can finally start clearing with the two-stage snowblower uh, now that I have it. Um, so, you know, I haven't actually used these yet. I've seen review videos on them. They do seem to work pretty well. So over time, you know, over the next winter, if we get enough snow, I'll be able to comment a little bit more about how they are. All I can really speak to right now is, uh, the assembly process and what it was like ordering them. So this one, I ordered it from Home Depot's website. It showed up in a few days. Uh, and it assembled very easily. Like all you have to do is 
you know, this uh, uh, handlebar here, it's folded down, so you just fold it back up and you put the screws in or the bolts or whatever, you put that in place, you put the little control bar in place here to address the, um, the chute, and I think you have to mount this thing here, and that's it. It goes together very simply. Um, pretty hassle-free. This is obviously more assembly. Yes, you do have to assemble the um, handlebar unit that also comes kind of folded down in a weird way. So you have to assemble that. You have to assemble uh, this control rod that controls the chute. Uh, you also have to put together uh, this control rod here that controls the essentially the speed setting. Okay, and then this cable here that hooks up to a spring and goes down right here, that controls your uh, throttle, essentially, or your forward motion, so you pull this down and it moves the snowblower forward. Um, this does have an adjustable turnbuckle here, so you can essentially adjust the spring tension when you pull this down. And uh, I did find myself having to adjust this basically all the way back to get maximum spring tension here, because when you, if you like lift this lever up, as you pull this down, I found I wasn't getting quite the full amount of travel. And so you need a lot more spring tension to get just the last little bit of travel out of this thing. At least that's what it appears to be on this specific model. Your mileage may vary. If you get this exact model, maybe you won't need to do that. Okay, there could be some variation from model to model. But this one's also adjustable over here. This is for the auger control. Okay, and what's neat about this is it has this little, I don't know, whatever you want to call this, this little flap here that basically automatically locks this handle from coming down. So that way you don't like accidentally close this off. So what you have to do is you have to hold this back to unlock it and then you pull it down to get the auger running. So that's a nice little, very simple safety feature. Here's your hand warmer, right, headlight. Um, all the other features I'm sure you can see from uh, uh, you know, other review videos on this thing. The only thing that I did to this that's, let's say, out of, uh, not stock is I replaced the sliders. Okay, so this comes with uh, red painted steel uh, sliders, or I guess you call them sliders or whatever, um, with the unit. And I bought these uh, plastic units that Toro makes, so it's a Toro unit, it's designed for this model. Uh, so that if you're, you know, on asphalt, like which is what my driveway is, the, the metal sliders, you don't want those to scrape the asphalt. So this will slide and not be as abrasive on the driveway surface. Um, so that's why those are like about $50 or so. They're not cheap. Um, what's cool about them though is that just like the stock units, they are adjustable. So this, uh, they have slotted mounting holes here on both the left and right sides. That does make it a bit of a pain to adjust it to just the right height on both sides. So you have to use like a marker and mark off your, your positions. Um, but this is a, I would likely recommend this for people who are purchasing this unit. So that way you don't destroy your driveway potentially uh, with, the, with the metal sliders. So yeah, really excited about that. This whole thing, by the way, it comes in a very large box that weighs over 200 pounds. It got shipped to me. I also ordered this from Home Depot and it took a while to arrive. Uh, they used a different shipping company to ship this out because it had to come on a crate. So it, it took a bit longer and uh, getting it off the crate and into the garage was also a bit of a task, but it's you know very, very doable. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to mention about these? No, that's about it. So, yeah, I hope this has been helpful to you if you're looking at getting new snowblowers this year, especially electric stuff. I try to have electric tools for all of my jobs because, you know, I, I don't have, like, an entire forest of trees I'm trying to cut down. So, you know, I I can do just fine with electric tools for, for my applications. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.